Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Daily Objective. And today is a very special one for me and probably for a lot of you. Something we all have in common here virtually among fans of Ayn Rand and students of objectivism is a deep respect and gratitude to who I would say, in my opinion, for what it's worth, the greatest living philosopher, Leonard Peikoff. Uh, we're going to talk about either uh, our first encounter with his work or perhaps meeting him in person, if that applies to my co-hosts, or, or just ways that Dr. Peikoff influenced us. And I'm, and I'm sure we'll uh, run out of time much sooner than uh, it will take to get some of those things off our chest. I remember in uh, around 2004 when I was in high school and I, I had already read Ayn Rand's Fountainhead and possibly Atlas Shrugged as well by that time, I had heard from the grapevine that somebody with some proximity to Ayn Rand, someone who has something to do with Rand's philosophy was on the radio at like 1.30 a.m. and uh, on a.m. radio, right? And um, and, you know, I think, you know, usually it was a school night, so I couldn't stay up that late. But like spring break or winter break came around and a lot of other kids, they went to Cancun or Miami. I stayed up and listened to uh, to hear what a real objectivist sounds like. And I tune in and I hear this nice, uh, I would say even soothing voice, just very confident and comfortable sounding voice talking. And I hear a caller call in and the caller who sounds like some kind of a hillbilly gentleman Tells, tells the host, he says, another thing that those three communists have in common is that they're, they're all Jewish. And uh, <laughs> the host of the show, Leonard Peikoff, says, oh, come on, are you really going to make a horse's behind of yourself in front of this whole audience? And the man goes, what? It's true. I, everywhere I look, I see Jews promoting communism. I, I could just turn on my electric Jew, also known as a television, and... Dr. Peikoff says, the Jews are just a race of people. They believe, various uh, Jews believe all types of different things. And the caller says, yeah, well, I went and fought in Vietnam. I was in Vietnam and the Jews over there were helping the communists. And Leonard Peikoff said, yeah, what were you doing over there? Smoking dope? And eventually hung up on the caller. And, uh, and then Peikoff said, if you look at the objectivist movement, there's a lot of Jews, people of Jewish descent. There's, you know, and he went on to talk about how philosophy is not obviously linked to your uh, race or your genetics, which should be obvious. But it's sad to look back and realize that was probably the first time I'd ever heard a person actually say that, actually articulate that type of individualism to, to, to state explicitly what I think we should all take for granted. I don't know if you'd call this self-evident. I'll be careful using that terminology on Leonard Peikoff's uh, birthday, but <laughs> uh, but uh, it is basically self-evident that everyone has free will and volition. So um, it, it was an influential moment for me. And of course, that's only the beginning of the way that Leonard Peikoff influenced me. But anyway, enough, enough with my world famous opening monologues. Let's introduce our other hosts here who I'm sure have a lot to say. Uh, we'll try to condense it. And how are we going to present it as guys in terms of essentials because we only it's only a 20 minute show and we are on a tight schedule <laughs> you like how i continue to uh, filibuster instead of just passing the mic over please welcome a man who cannot contain his laughter chicago's very own jonathan honig thank you thank you rucka thank you for having me especially on today and more than anything happy birthday to dr peacock i hope you get a a big piece of cake and maybe a little glass of vodka. I often remember from your radio shows that was something you, you enjoyed. And you know, Rucka, I, I have to say, if I can take the mic for one moment, I mean, you. the fact is you said you heard him on the radio <laughs> as a high school student and it really changed your life. And you stayed up late to listen to him. At the end of Dr. Peikoff's experience on the radio, I believe I remember him saying, you know, I wanted to bring, I'm, of course, I, this is my own, I, I'm paraphrasing. I wanted to bring philosophy to the masses and I concluded that it couldn't be done, but it, it, it worked, you know, it worked, and you're a great example of that because look what you've, you know, you're not a high school student anymore. You've grown up to become a young man who integrates philosophy in a very unique and influential way. So, you know, you're a success story of that. And, and you know, mine is not the same in terms of discovering Dr. Peacock, but it's not totally dissimilar. He talks about meeting Rand when he was 17 I discovered Peikoff, exactly as you said, after I discovered Rand, I wasn't 17, I was maybe 18 or 19. 
Um, and it was also, as you said, in one of his, his radio shows that, that, uh, that same year. And, you know, I was a, uh, philosophy minor in college and I was really depressed. I mean, I was unhappy. I was in a really bad state. Um, my parents were paying a lot of money to go, to send me to a very expensive school. And I was actually, you know, studying philosophy and I was very curious about it. And I, you know, people always said, oh, you should read Ayn Rand. I said, it's too, uh, you know, that's too long of a book for me. I ultimately read it and, and discovered uh, Dr. Peikoff. Um, and I was being taught so many terrible ideas in college at the time. You name it from, you know, multiculturalism to, you know, socialism, environmentalism, altruism. That's what was being taught to me at this very, you know, these very fancy schools. And, you know, Dr. Peikoff so eloquently, so effortlessly destroyed all of that, wiped it clean in his kind of passionate, engaging, intriguing, challenging way as an on-air host. And then <clears throat> of course, as a podcast host, and then as an author, you know, you have his, his Adim here as well. Um, uh, Razi, I was, uh, you know, one of the, you know, truly times in my life I've been speeches. I've met famous people. I've met, I've actually met the president, I guess, Jimmy Carter, if you consider him a real president, but, um, you know, meeting Dr. Peacock and having him sign my, my book was, uh, uh, and it was an opportunity that really left me speeches and actually to see, meet him at Ocon a few years later. So, um, you know, go back and read his uh, uh, and listen to his podcasts. They're gold, they're funny, they're engaging. And the way that he was able to <coughs> apply uh, Rand's ideas to everyday life. I, you know, I'm, my mind, and this is my own interpretation, I feel like this, Rand created objectivism. Dr. Peikoff, in effect, formalized it. And people like Dr. Brook and others, and I believe the Ayn Rand Center in UK are now helping to spread it to the world. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, I think of Dr. Peikoff starting in the 1950s when there was literally no such thing as objectivism, you know, and, and his endless um, advocacy. There's a story he told in one of his podcasts um, where basically a professor of him of his kind of teased him like, oh, how's that objectivism thing going? How many people? And literally at the time there was 20 or 30 people that even knew what objectivism was. And you know, Dr. Peikoff kind of uh, created it and he was a part of it. So his fearlessness as a defender of capitalism, morality, um, you know, I mean, think of it. He's someone who is as radical being published in the journal as he is in the Huff Post, you know, and his articles in both have really created a lot of waves. So um, he always talks about how writing is hard for him and I empathize because it's hard for me too, but his lecture course particularly, uh, and I'll, I'll quickly say his lecture course, his 76 lecture course to me was just like candy. Uh, everyone should, should check that out. It's one of my favorites. The debate, the 84 debate with he and John Ridpath. This is a masterclass of what debate should be. I mean, it is, he has a stadium of hundreds of kids screaming and yelling about, you know, respectfully, it's not of today's trash with uh, throwing paint and shit. I mean, it, it's exciting about ideas. And that's what Dr. Peikoff ultimately did. And I'll, I'll share one more thing too, before I pass it to, to Mark is uh, Dr. Peikoff is a well-known lover of animals. And um, I'm someone uh, who, um, uh, also is a lover of animals and in particular um, uh, pets and in particular um, uh, dogs. So this is a post from my blog uh, a couple of years ago. This is my dog Bailey, who I have to say uh, at a person that I'm kind of saying goodbye to right now, he's, he's at the end of his life, but Dr. Peikoff talks on his podcast quite a bit about, about pets. And he says, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with dogs, the games, the play together, the exercise that you can do with humans too. But I think of a dog almost like a one-year-old child. It's your child. He's, at, he's asked in this context about, can you really love a dog? You know, what kind of values can you share with a dog? And he says, yes, at the end of the day, you can love a dog. There's a special communication. I don't mean from God, but between the animal and yourself. Uh, and he concludes by saying, there's nothing, nothing I wouldn't do to keep my dog happy and healthy, nothing. So uh, Dr. Peikoff, here's to you, to the animals and all the values in your life. Thanks for helping me to be happy, successful, um, and to, to teach me on a daily basis. There's not a lot of podcasts and material I go back and listen to. Dr. Peikoff's podcasts are, are repeat uh, listening and they should be yours too. So happy birthday, Dr. P. Many yeah. more. 
Many, many more. And when you actually uh, start to listen to or read uh, Leonard Peikoff's philosophy courses, you realize the podcasts and even the books were just kind of like the sexy presentation of it. Like yes, it's yes. Serious, serious heavy lifting he does to get you there. And let's pass it along to a man. Oh, let me who, stop sharing. Yeah, sorry. Oh yeah, uh, we don't need we don't need to see your search history. John. Oh, with my logo up. <laughs> yeah. But uh, let me uh, pass it along to uh, an, uh, an artist, a man who you know. When anyone who's ever said uh, actors are not known to be very intelligent, clearly hasn't met this man. He is uh, he is an ardent uh, intellectual, and uh, if all actors had his opinion and perspective, I think the world would be saved. <laughs> Mark Pellegrino. <laughs> wow. Um, well, I want you guys at my birthday party. You guys, uh, you guys really know how to sing, sing praises. Um, yeah. I'll just say happy birthday, Leonard off the bat. And I, I was introduced to these ideas um, in my twenties. So I'm a late bloomer, I guess uh, my, my mid twenties. And uh, it was actually Peacock who, who helped unlock objectivism for me a lot more. He was able to take some of the, uh, some of the technical philosophical language that Rand used in her textbook and make it very accessible to me. And I think he developed the ideas uh, further than her, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that cemented their legitimacy, I think, in the world. I also was a big fan of his radio show um, in, in where I'm from. Uh, are, Rucker, are you in L.A.? Yeah, but I was in Detroit in those days. Oh, OK. Yeah, because I used to listen to it in the afternoon, pretty much on the drive home. And it started out, I think, as a one hour, one hour uh, show. And over a, just a few months, it became syndicated pretty quickly and, and it had to expand to a three hour forum but it was the one show I could look forward to every day. And I remember, I remember Vincent Bugliosi had, had just written the book on the, um, on the Simpson, OJ Simpson trial. And I had listened to him on probably three or four other syndicated radio shows. And he had a, he had a very formulaic approach to answering questions. The questions were all the same and his answers were all the same, very formulaic. And then he came on Leonard's show and Leonard threw him for a loop because he was asking him questions from a philosophical point of view. And for the first time in, in watching Bugliosi, not only through the years, but in listening to them on the, on the shows, he was stumped. He did not know how to answer, I'd say a good 30 or 40% of the questions that Leonard was asking. Um, and that, that just in itself showed how much deeper his radio show was than all of the other uh, radio shows out there. And radio has a media, is a medium that's deeper than television. It's one of the deeper mediums out there. And so he was sort of the pinnacle of that. And I was really, really uh, bummed to, uh, to find out that he, he couldn't do it anymore. Um, my understanding was that it was just too exhausting uh, to, to make a, a philosophical show three hours a day was just too much for him to make it, uh, to make it tight to make it seamless. I know he's a perfectionist about that stuff because, uh, you know, writing is actually, it is, is, is not hard. Writing is easy. Writing well is hard. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, I haven't, I haven't seen a lecture that he's done, which is thought out in advance and written that isn't seamless, that yeah. isn't seamless and, and almost poetic in, in his delivery. Um, it sort of screwed me up for my OAC um, oral presentation because we're not supposed to read these things, but I was I watched I watched Leonard doing a presentation where he was reading clearly, but also, you know, engaging uh, the audience. And I thought, wow, Leonard's reading. I'll do it, too. Uh, and I don't do it. He's a he's a trained professional. And uh, I wasn't. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, Leonard Leonard has done a, a lot to democratize this uh, this philosophy and make it get accessible to people like us who uh, really want to spread it to the rest of the world. So let's hope before, before Leonard leaves us that we're able to uh, bring hundreds, thousands, if not millions more uh, into the fold. Yeah, um, I think, you know, Leonard Peikoff's work is definitely, uh, in, hopefully, and I think it will be historical. I think it will be uh, preserved and studied. 
Um, I, so I, I never uh, met Leonard Peikoff, but uh, I had a, the option to once. He was doing a book signing at, at his last public appearance, I think. And I just was like, okay, I'm, I just don't need, like, I'm usually pretty assertive. If I want to meet someone, if I want to make an impression, if I have something to just ask somebody, I, I could usually rise to the occasion. But in this case, I just said, like, just give the man some space. I'm, this is just one person I just would rather just admire from afar. Um, and in, pre in preparing for this show today, I was thinking about like, I'm getting like choked up talking about someone who's still alive and well, like um, I've never like been so such, felt such a sense of loss. Tear, for somebody. Tears at a, is that tears at a wedding, Rekka? Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's his retirement. It feels like the loss of a person, you know, it feels yeah, like yeah, someone no. left us, but I mean, I might pass him in the street and not even notice, you know, he's, he, you know, it's, uh, it's his retirement. I used to look forward. I'm a bit younger than you guys. I was more of a podcast. His podcast is what yeah. um, I used to look forward to every week. And uh, when he announced his retirement, it just felt like um, it felt like a real sense of loss. Um, another way that he uh, impacted me was that um, <coughs> his books. So he wrote The Ominous Parallels, which uh, I think is just a seriously... Um, important book it, it hurts mm -hmm. me that it's out of print but uh, you know you can still get it on amazon and maybe it'll be reprinted again in the future it addresses uh kind of what happened in germany that you know the the rise of the, thir the third reich this is kind of the most perplexing thing uh and it's such an like an, a, 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 an historical uh, occurrence you know like communism has usually been imposed i think in like developing countries it's basically a handful of intellectuals uh, they tend to just kind of impose communism on a bunch of peasants, that's speaking very generally. But here was a, an industrialized, highly educated populace that turned to fascism. And it's, uh, it, it, it perplexes most people. And of course, um, I heard a lot about the Holocaust growing up. So uh, reading this book was uh, The Ominous Parallels was just very impactful for me. And it helped uh, concretize philosophy. It, it, it showed me why... Um, Philosophy is not just a, something you study. It actually has consequences in real life. And another way that Leonard Peikoff's uh, work impacted me was, uh, so myself and uh, Josh Dixon, our, our absent host, uh, we're both sober guys. And it's kind of an ongoing side project he and I have is kind of trying to understand the world of addiction and recovery as it relates to objectivism. And the first time I ever went to uh, the Objectivist Conference in 2013, First time I'd met any objectivist at all, I was asking people, did, did Ayn Rand ever say anything about addiction? Did anyone ever talk about the 12-step program or anything? And no one really had much to offer me. When I got back home from the conference, I looked on uh, Peikoff's website, his podcast, and I found an episode he did where he talked about the 12-step program and how um, objective reality, like the, the, the role that that plays in your mind, could be kind of like an equivalent of a higher power so that a person might be able to utilize the 12-step program without seeing it as a mystical type of program. It's just, a, a, just an excellent example of Leonard Peikoff just, just basically sounding like he's speaking off the top of his head is, is changing, changing lives left and right and, um, and offers that like kind of next level understanding of what it all means, that it's not just an exercise, that it really means something. We have basically one minute left. I'm sorry for this uh, long, uh, monopolization I just did. The Lord Emperor behind the scenes is telling us to wrap it up. <laughs> we are, by the way, uh, as soon as we're done here going, uh, or shortly after we're done here, there's going to be an event um, celebrating the birthday of Leonard Peikoff with some of your favorite objectivists uh, tuning in to share their thoughts. So right here on Ayn Rand Center UK, make sure to uh, be present for that. Uh, Jonathan, uh, Mark, you guys wanna jump in with any thoughts? Sure, I'll, I'll briefly say, uh, once again, happy birthday, Dr. Peacock. Stay tuned to the Ayn Rand Center UK. And as they say, ring the bell to get notified every time they get they go live. You're going to be able to check it out. And they've always got something really interesting coming up. So stay tuned, especially to that, that live broadcast that's coming right up after this. And, and you mentioned the Ominous Parallels, uh, uh, Ruck. I'll just say it's a good sign, in fact, that I used to give away copies of the Ominous Parallels as kind of, uh, you know, freebie gifts. And they've become very rare collectible items now uh, on Amazon, et cetera. They're, uh, you know, 18, 19, 20 bucks for used paperback books. So check out another book of Dr. Peikoff's called The Cause of Hitler's Germany. 
which is widely available. It's not very expensive. And it's basically the great little essential parts of the ominous parallel. So it's on mm -hmm. Amazon. Happy birthday once again, Dr. Peekoff. And to everyone out there, please check out his work. Yes, and that's all the time we have. Please, Rozzy, behind the scenes, wait a few seconds before you stop streaming so that my outro doesn't get cut off. And I will close us with off with Leonard Peikoff's <laughs> usual outro of his podcast and say, if you want to know more, start by reading Ayn Rand's two most important novels, The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged. Thank you and goodbye. Bye. I'll just say you hit the post from nine eyes. <laughs>